This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. This is bonus episode 430. I'm your host Duncan McLeish. <laughs> welcome to the show. I was not terrifying at all. Um, yeah, as you may, hopefully, if this has all went according to plan, as you may realise, we're in video format. Now, if you're looking at your Apple device right now, or your Stitcher device, or whatever it is you're using which isn't Spotify, or YouTube, you're like, Duncan, this is just audio. And if that's the case, drink it in. Drink in that audio. Picture us, naked, with oils. I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, But if you are using either Spotify or you've jumped directly to our YouTube site, you will be seeing us just now. Now, the plan is to try and do more video content as time goes by. And we're going to start off with the video content purely with my guest right now. And then longer term, maybe other people will do shows with me and all the rest. But he's joining me for this very special episode. This bonus episode, 430. He's rubbing his nipples. He is the man. He is the myth. He is the legend. He is the bands. Just getting them good and pointy, my friend. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm currently fucking about up here in the top right hand corner, my friend. Trying to get my picture bigger. So I'm not constantly looking over to the side here, like I've got the world's worst squint. You because try to make me look small. actually up here. <laughs> you try to make me look smaller and make yourself look bigger, you vain motherfucker. A wee bit, but in the process of doing that, I believe I paused myself for a little bit. I, I just assumed that you were working on your, your amateur mime. Zen, big man, I'm zen. <laughs> <laughs> <Cheers>. <laughs> So this is kind of, for anyone that's ever listened to us, this is kind of what it's like behind the scenes. Right. I'm going to lie, Bass is on his best behaviour right now. we clothed than we normally are, because <laughs> you can see us now. You can, you can. But we're going to try this, we're going to see how it goes. And uh, if it turns out that it works out well... well, I'd wager. <laughs> It will work well, just fucking bear with me. Um, then, then we'll be moving forward. Not only have we doing the video here, and we're on our best behaviour, but we both switched to hot beverages and in my Jason cup I have some tea and in yours you have some blue mug full of coffee um, but I also did horse down a small mini Mars bar before recording and it's all over my teeth I love it um, (laughs) if you wonder why I'm fucking about here like I've just fucked somebody off the thing is this is video now our buddy Patrick will have just emptied his nuts at that clip um, not for the first time I think he's taken to sending it to me in the post by the way <laughs> really crispy little envelopes keep turning up <laughs> we don't fucking have to but I know it's him <laughs> we love you Patrick love um, you yeah. <laughs> so this was your idea this was a, a Bazzy's idea not the video <laughs> that's my idea <laughs> calm down, calm down. Uh, this was your idea for an episode where you kind of thought we'd in the uh, Bazoween episodes, we'd bounce back and forward some ideas about potentially doing a kind of recap of some of the highlights we had in our viewings during October, maybe some of the lower Oh, yeah, yeah, there. yeah. I didn't think we were going to visually record it, though, but yeah, it was I, my idea just to have a chat yeah. through the old 31 Days of Horror, or for the, the more sane <laughs> among us, however many days of Halloween. Right, so the the question I need to ask you first then is, how many days of Halloween did you do? Thirteen. Unlucky for that, some, big man. That is not bad, considering we were spitting distance from the end and you'd done eight. Yeah, yeah. And because 
Oh, I missed one off, actually. Um, because I know you have done your 31, which yep. is going to make this a very lopsided episode, <laughs> I've also written down four that I watched just after. One, in fact, two of them were kind of half in Halloween, but I didn't quite get through them all. So there's a couple of extra ones just to pad out a wee bit, but they're worth talking about. I genuinely thought you were going to pull a big Scott McKenzie and uh, based on that. I picked four movies that I thought I might like. Yeah, that I've not watched. actually watched them. But yeah, I expect <laughs> to like them when I see them, though. So. Shots fired. Shots fired. They so don't we're record, gonna, ever. We're, we're going out in a couple of weeks for our Jaws' shite Christmas yes. day out, so I'm just getting the digs in early. Yeah, I also think that they specifically advertised a Halloween live stream event that they were going to be doing on the 2nd of November that didn't happen. Yeah, but that was Liam. He's always <laughs> chock full of drugs. So I, I, just, he said, I don't believe anything he says. He sent me a message. He sent me a message after... It was like the day after or something. He sent me a message like that. I mean, I sent it out, and as soon as I sent it, I was like, I, didn't, I don't even think I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly made a poster. No, he'd made all the artwork for yeah. it, and then, but I don't know. He's, he's the world's he's worst cock tease, or he best really cock tease, I'm not sure which, but he's, he's the world's most extreme cock tease, <laughs> that's for sure. It depends if you like weeks long edging sessions, yeah. then he's your man, he's your man. Yeah, with, uh, with no money shot at the end. <laughs> no money Just shot. edging, just edging, but it's quite bad for your heart, I've heard. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Bad for the prostate. Um, yeah, right. So, uh, so, uh, like, I've already, I've already given a bit of a, a relative deep dive. Well, I say relative deep dive. Many reviews of everything I've done anyway. But yeah. I'm not actually kind of really got into the stuff that I really like from that list. The stuff that maybe I don't like from that list, and kind of why and why people should watch it more than anything or avoid it. Um, so the floor is yours first. What, what you bring into the table, Baz? Uh, first up. Uh, we Netflix tert. Uh, <laughs> my best friend's exorcism. Ah, we've both seen this. Yeah, um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was actually quite a good one to start off with. So I did that on the first of November. That one. Um, it's a nice light kind of entry, and it, mm-hmm. it, it's fairly comedic, but it has some gnarly bits in it as well, actually. And I've, I've noticed a kind of trend with this with horror comedies. They are, they're getting a bit darker and a bit more kind of visceral these yep. days, I've noticed. Um, so that one was, quite, was very much like that. Now, the girl... What, oh, she was in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the new one. <laughs> you know her from that, I know her from 8th grade, which I, I don't know how we flipped roles all of a sudden and you're referencing the horror movie and I'm re- referencing the quirky indie comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A bit underage girls, so right. you fucking freak. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Dave went to watch that movie and it was not awkward at all. I know. Um, yeah, so she was in it and I liked her in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. She was one of the better. She's she a good there. actress, she is. Uh, she is, she's a very good wee actress. Um, I, I love the whole kind of 80s aesthetic running through the whole thing. Um, there's some really good kind of one-liners and there are genuine laugh out loud moments in this movie which with a lot of horror comedies you don't get it tends to be a more kind of light-hearted horror film um yep. whereas this one genuinely is funny bits in it one of the bits is, and this is in the trailer if you can't bother watching the film but when the the girl that's been possessed vomits she's at school all possessed and she vomits and the guy and the guy's like this is lacoste because he's got fucking <laughs> popped collar fucking top on and all that <laughs> things like that tickle me no end so yeah I quite enjoyed this film um, it's a pretty well done pretty gnarly effects in it as well a lot of practical stuff in it which is really good so yeah did yeah, you I'm enjoy the same that as you. One? yeah I, I, I thought it was I thought it was quite I thought it was quite good don't know what I expected to be honest you you kind of said to me like that it's all clearly trading off the old Stranger Things vibe that's going oh, around heavy duty, yeah. um and yeah, I know it's based on a novel that's relatively well regarded. So there's a lot of people that were very excited about it. I thought it was I thought it was fine. I enjoyed it. It made me laugh at certain bits, made me cringe at certain bits. I thought the effects were done really well. Loved the score. Um, like yourself, I loved those little nods to, to certain things that you remember from the eighties. 
whether that's you know like um, like groups of individuals that do motivational speeches at your high school, um, you know like t- like traveling. There's that the, they had the the one that they used to do on. It's the one that always used to make me cringe because it was so close to the bone. Is the one they used to do in the League of Gentlemen. I never um, watched the League of Gentlemen. Did you not? Well, there was a traveling group in that one called Legs Akimbo. Um, <laughs> Right, and it was the cheesiest, you know, like, we're going to tell you why you shouldn't take drugs, isn't that right? Um, that sort of thing, and um, you've never watched The League of Gentlemen? No, no. Oh, man, I, I, I attempted it. I, I think probably after me started doing the show, because I knew how much a huge fan you are. My, my yeah. neatest thing to well, I watched, uh, obviously I've watched Inside Number 9, which is done by the two of the guys from it. Yep. But that, those photographs of you as Papa Lazarus. Yeah, which would uh, get me cancelled now, man. So, oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, um, not, let's, let's not focus on that. <laughs> that was the newest I've ever here. I think I tried to watch it. I think it was maybe on one of the streaming services when I first took them up. Yeah. Um, was it maybe Netflix or something? Anyway, regardless, I can have watched like, the first episode of that. No. I think I'm going to dig it's this. Very, very, very strange. But it's yeah. just, it's full of horror references, and I think that's why I love it so much. It just reminds me a really weird off the beaten track horror. Just uncomfortable in parts, and other bits talk. It's like a pure cringe TV show. Yeah. Like, there's whole sections there where you're just like, this is just, uh, you'd like wear it for a day afterwards. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, I but yeah, like, things like that as well. Yeah. You know, so I, 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 it was like, so it, it, like those elements when it hit on those certain sweet notes of, or oh, you know, like the the, the kind of the, the Jesus workout crew and all this, you know, those m- m- bits that kind of made me kind of smile as well. But ultimately, I thought it was really entertaining. Um, I had a, I had a predictable payoff, which I quite liked. But like yourself, because it's on a streaming site and it's Amazon money that's financed it, they can go darker than you would get like g- generally on a like a sky or whatever um and like the scenes specifically of like the the chick that ends up like anorexic or bulimic uh, one yeah of the, i think it's anorexic it's really uncomfortable to watch like the, those scenes were the, more than anything else and those were the ones that started getting under my skin um so I, I liked it i thought it was very much like yourself i think it's a it's a, probably a good one to ease yourself into i think it's also a good one if you're wanting to like if you've got a, like a young teenager in the house that wants to start to get into horror, it's a, a really good entry point. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing yeah. too horrific in it. It is kind of dark, but there's a ton of humour in there they'll get. So yeah, I would agree with that. Is. I think that is a good choice. So what did you open with? Right. So let me let, let me let me tell you my faux pas. Right. And I'm I'm not going to go through every single one in the thirty one here, but I'm going to pick out choice cuts, but probably in line with kind of how many you're going to suggest. But I started off with the worst possible choice, and I do this to myself, Buzz. I do this to myself every year. I try. I like balance, so I pick movies that I think there's a good chance I won't like as well, and I only ever do movies that have been released in that year. That's how I run my thirty one. Um, and I started with Day Shift. Day Shift is a Netflix movie, and it stars Jamie Fox. Something about and, Vampire Hunter or something? Yeah. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> At least there's Snip- no fucking can you. That's, that's the <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Snoop Dogg is also a vampire hunter who dresses like a cowboy and walks around with a minigun. Um, so Day Shift is kind of a, a comedy action movie with vampire horror elements in it. And... Yeah. I said off the back of that, and I reiterate with it, any slight inkling I had to see that new Blade movie is kind of gone now. Right. The idea of the kind of the action troop going out, hunting down the vampires and all the rest, that, that I'm so over it, it's unbelievable. Uh, Jamie Foxx looks like he's having fun in it, but it's not funny. And the the young Franco's in it, not not the not the one that's in all the trouble now, but he's he's younger he's younger brother. Not James Franco. Yeah, is it David David Franco? Is it David? I can't remember what his brother's name is. I'll tell you. Just say Dave. Big Dave Franco. Uh, Dave Franco <laughs> he's in it. sounds right actually. Yep. Yeah, he's he's in it, and um, he's fine. But it's kind of like a whole lot of. 
it's, it's like a really cliche story as well. He works as a vampire exterminator, but he has to lie to his family about it. And there's a bill due for his kid to go to school, and if he doesn't collect a certain amount of dollars before this, and it's, like, it's like it's like Friday. It's literally blood money. Yeah. <laughs> so like yeah, but it's like if you've ever seen the movie Friday, it's basically Friday, but with vampires and not funny. No, I'm like, Ice Cube, Chris, Chris Tucker. Yeah, no, I'm like, you no, just got knocked the fuck out. Um, yeah, it's it's not good. It's not good. And then the worst thing about it, once again, there are certain points in movies where I feel like the director is not only stomping on my nutsack but spitting in my face. Um, is the very end where Snoop Dogg quotes the Lost Boys, which is an infinitely better movie. So that's uh-huh. the reason I like it. And that's the reason I love LA. All the damn vampires. Uh, and I'm like, oh no, you fucking no, didn't. That, that's a uh, that's teabagging you. That, that that's <laughs> just there's no rubbing your face, and that's like dipping its balls in your mouth to leave you with that salty aftertaste. <laughs> it's, it's just I don't know the thing. I, I come to the conclusion is I don't know who it's aimed at. Like I don't. It's right. obviously not aimed at horror fans because it's not. It doesn't lean that way. Yeah. If it's aimed at action fans, I don't think there's enough action in it to really merit it, and I don't think it works as a comedy. So ultimately, it didn't really work for me in any way, shape, or form in entertainment, horror, or anything else. The, the fight scenes were well choreographed. That's about it. Uh-huh. So I'm going to give that yeah. one a heavy fucking swerve. Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's a Netflix yeah, I know. exclusive. I've, I've seen it pop up, kind of thing. Yeah, I'm avoid. I'm fucking near it. <laughs> um, so my next couple, in fact, are um, films that we've discussed on other shows. So these were ones that I was doing for uh, Bazoin this year. Um, mm-hmm. So it was The Wailing and Phantasm Four. Two movies um, you loved. Films that landed differently. It's fair <laughs> to say. Um, no. <laughs> if you've not listened to, to Bazoween, turn this piss off and go and listen to Bazoween. Um, uh, it's an, uh, yeah, it's the long form version of this, but indeed, suffice to say, indeed. you did have different viewing experiences. Yeah, yeah. The, the, Wailing is a, the Wailing is a great film. It's a Korean <laughs> horror film that you kind of think might be a zombie film, and then it's not actually a zombie film, and it just mm. keeps you guessing, but it, it, it was really good. It was really yep. good. I'm not going to bang on about it because we talked about it at length. About an hour and 45 minutes yeah. talking about that movie, which is um, almost the runtime of the movie. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> Phantasm 4. Oof. What one was that again? Um, I think Phantasm 4 was your least favourite. So that's the one that oh, used, the one that all, used the... all the unused footage for your art yeah. films. Oh! oh. <laughs> That was awful, that film. <laughs> no offence to any people out there that enjoy sucking cock, because yep. this is not enjoyable. So if you like sucking cock, it's nothing like sucking cock. Yep, uh, there we if go. you're like me and would rather avoid doing that, then yeah. it's very much like that. Um, <laughs> well uh, explained. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, I'd imagine it's like sucking a fairly unshaved one, and you come away like stuffing your teeth and all. Like, oh, yes, no, no, yeah. Doug shit film. <laughs> Doug shit film. So I'm just going to keep crashing on then. So the, the next one that I watched that we've not talked about was Satanic Panic, mm. uh, which was over on the old Shudder. Shudder, and it was uh, titled yeah. correctly. There wasn't any issues watching that one, though. No. no, no, that was correctly labelled. Um, that's, that's a bonus. You know, they managed to get the absolute basics correct. <laughs> um, yeah, no, and that was again. That was another. I, I really quite enjoyed Satanic Panic. I, to be honest, I couldn't tell you an awful lot about the film, but I remember watching it and thinking, "Yeah, that's pretty good." Yeah. Um, way in, you way in now. Go on. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. I just to link on to Satanic Panic. Satanic Panic is he. Is he is candy floss sort of movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's a ton of fun. It doesn't really stay with you afterwards, and no. it won't make an end of your list. But when you're watching it, you're like, "This is really." It has it's so over the top and so much fun that yeah, you, you should I, check I, it out. I again. think for for things like this, I mean, I know I don't do the thirty one, but if, if you're trying yeah. to do the 
horror binging during October. Yeah. Films like this and my best friend's exorcism and that are good are ones to chuck in there. You know, you I have could to just want to sit back one night and relax and not really have to think about it. Do you know what I mean? Maybe use this to dilute films like Hagazuzu and stuff like that. If that's <laughs> what you're watching, do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, right, I'll, I'll, let me swing in with... Uh, I'll give you a two for two that I really enjoyed. Uh, one of them is Fresh... That's the name of the movie, not how I'm grading okay. it. It's available on Disney Plus um, and stars the dude that plays the Winter Soldier. Oh, uh-huh. Right, yep. Yeah, and some, yeah, some chick whose name I should remember and I have it in front of me, so I don't have to. Uh, Daisy Edgar Jones. She said hot. She has a hyphenated surname. Um, and she's been in some stuff that I don't think I've ever seen so let's not bother with that uh yeah so it's a kind of this is going super well it's a cannibal all right horror comedy i don't know if you remember this a while ago we were having a a, a wee chat on the jaws's shite recording i think it was the last one we did which is months and months and months ago um and our buddy scott had said what what, i was watching a movie and there was cannibals in it and then I had to think if someone made me a cannibal like a human burger would I eat it or not remember that conversation yeah, this th- is the this movie is he watched he, he kind of accidentally outed his sister <laughs> as being cannibal curious she was yeah right. like she was uh, we like to call that pulling a hammer uh, um, and then off the back <laughs> of that mere weeks later well maybe no weeks later a month or two later <laughs> We were all in attendance at Liam's wedding in Glasgow, and I had never met Scott's sister before. Yeah. Scott's sister, lovely girl, yes. really drunk before that wedding. Yeah. Like, I mean, she went <laughs> into that wedding fully fucking loaded. And uh, she just came bouncing up and started talking away to me as if I knew her, and I'm like that. Uh, uh, first of all, I wasn't sure who she was at first. And then yep. Scott appeared, and I realised who it was. And then she started getting on about the cannibal curious thing, and I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. I played along like I knew what I was talking about, but it wasn't until quite a while later when I happened to listen back to Jaws of Shite. You cannot bring up things that are said in those Jaws of Shite podcasts. We drink I a am lot. Wrecked when I do those podcasts. We're very drunk. They will eventually become video shows as well, and um, yeah, you'll see how fucking the eyes start to yeah. kind of cross over and get glazed well fresh is basically it's a kind of it's a horror cannibal dark comedy okay. sort of movie where basically your man from the winter soldier is uh very attractive obviously and he's yeah. seducing women and kidnapping them and then taking them to his home where he's essentially rearing them like cattle to chop up into little bits and sell to gourmet people that pay a premium service for human meat to be delivered. You had me rearing them like cattle. I am so almost like a now. almost like a, a go fresh box yeah. where he includes a recipe and a part of a person's body to go with it. Yeah. That does um, actually sound quite funny. It is a surprisingly good movie. Um, it's paced really, really well. Surprisingly dark, like because it's on Disney Plus. I always forget that Disney Plus, Disney own a ton of fucking different yeah, yeah, ventures yeah. and outputs. Now that some of that stuff on there is not, they've got like, that Star Channel. Like, yeah, um, like, yeah that stuff. Well, it's stuff on. Like I think that. it falls under the. It's a Hulu production, so it falls yeah. under Disney or Stars or whatever it is. Um, and yeah, it's acted well. It's shot well. It teases up something during the movie, which hints to something of. A, a kind of a higher power behind everything which they never really pay off but I kind of liked it being in there and yeah it, it, it was very 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 well done okay. and by the end of it I, I kind of felt like I could easily come back to this you know it's, it's, it's a, you know if they decided they wanted to extend and make a, a fresh two or two it fresh sounds vaguely similar to something like Santa Clarita Diet or something like that. I, I get a feeling that if you like Santa Clarita Diet, then you will like Fresh, even though it's not as funny. Yeah. It definitely plays dark. I, I love humor. Santa Clarita Diet, and yeah. I'm really still not talking to Netflix over the fact they cancelled it. Yeah, I think one, one day that Wix. ship will... Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> Um, it was really good so like, it's out there you can check it out please do so that's the first one I wanted to mention uh, and then I wanted to double it up with a little film from a country called Finland <laughs> where all the best horror films come from um, well if this is anything going by it then they may have made one of my favourite horror movies of the year um, from Finland there is a movie called Hatching okay which plays like a body horror fairy tale it's about a girl who if she lays an egg I'm out no no so it's about a girl who is like the eldest sibling she's got a younger sibling and the mum and dad and the mum is obsessed with like basically being the perfect family on the internet, so she's constantly taking oh, right. videos or making all these like a kind of influencer sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. The dad's completely detached from the family, couldn't give a fuck about the family, and the little brother is on his way to becoming a serial killer. You know, he's two steps away from fucking torturing cats and shit, and she just doesn't feel like she connects in the family. Um, and the movie, like at the beginning, and the, like the kind of opening five minutes, a bird makes its way into the house and the mum breaks the bird's neck when she captures it and she puts it out and she hears this bird in the middle of the night and goes out and finds out that the bird's still barely alive but it's kind of sheltering this egg which she brings in from the forest and then starts to this does sound like something you would fucking love McLean. I fucking <laughs> absolutely love this you'd love this as well it, it's got a dark streak that I fucking the effects in this are mind blowing Right. Uh, and I'll explain in a second because they went animatronic, like proper animatronic, and um, the, the work in it is like absolutely jaw dropping. Well, she brings this thing in, she starts looking after the egg, but the egg starts growing to human size after she cries on it and it absorbs her tear and it starts growing human size. And what comes out of it is like a weird, kind of like deformed, kind of almost dinosaur bird that starts to. <laughs> become her doppelganger over time right, like okay. al almost like you know you, they've got the the, the kind of Irish fairy tale of the what are they it's like they did in that movie the whole uh, the, the oh the, the kind of changeling things uh, changeling uh, uh, so basically it's like a, it's a changeling story right but you get to see it through through this kind of prism Um the the creature that comes out the egg is all done animatronic and it's creepy as fuck and then the movie just continually sets up these kind of weird dark comedic moments again but mixed with this really bizarre body horror um it has a really powerful ending that i loved and by the end of it i was like this is kind of fucking amazing like i i thought what? was it's on it has uh, it's had issues basically. It has had issues being released here right. because cinemas in the UK are shit. Um, I will, uh, I will speak to you afterwards. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's up there. It's in my top five for the year, and on a rewatch, it might make my top three. I thought it was really, really, really fucking good, and um, surprising, like because it's a bona fide great, like by the looks of things, very well funded horror movie from Finland um, yeah so I loved it it's called Hatching um, and if you've not seen it check it out I'm, I'm going to jump to the end of my list um, <laughs> oh right is, to that end this is one of the films that wasn't actually watched during October it was just this is the most recent one it was just watched a couple of nights ago actually mm -hmm. um, because it's on Disney Plus as well oh uh, and it's dog shit <laughs> Uh, it's a film called It's a film called Grim Cutty. Oh, this is the one that's based on the 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 fucking based on Momo. Yeah, this thing that my daughter was fucking terrified yeah, of. Yeah, me and Shed Stu watched it the other night. Um, we our two families had gone to a fireworks display for bonfire night. Yep. And when we came back, I went to his house and his wife came up to mine. And plan was that me and Stu were supposed to be watching some of the World Series because he's got back into baseball recently. Yep. Realised it wasn't coming on until like after midnight. 
and th- so that was just not going to happen because neither of us are new. So um, we, we fucked the back of it with a film, and I had been looking about on Disney Plus, like going through the the films, and I'd seen this thing and it, it, a kind of cool visual on it. So yeah, we watched that. Oh fucking hell! Yes, yeah, so it was based on the Momo. It, it's like they'd have been better just making a film of it, Momo. Do you know what I mean? Is it? Like, I don't know if there's a rights thing or something. But why? That. Because that was just an internet fucking meme that got a hand. You know, nobody. Well, yeah, came. we've had fucking read the Slenderman movie and we saw how well that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, anyway, it, it's awful. It's like a. This is this is giving it too much credit. It's like a low grade mashup of the Babadook and the Slenderman. Oh Jesus! Right. But it's a lot closer <laughs> to Slenderman. It's just the <laughs> figure they use that appears. See, it, like obviously with Momo, it was only ever on the screen. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was this thing, and they would say like, "I'm thinking, kill your mum," and you know, <laughs> folk were going to fucking stab in the mom and all that kind of stuff. If, see if they'd done something like that, that would have been okay, but no, of course, it's a fucking film, so we've got to have this thing now coming into the room, all yeah. gangly and weird looking, and go like, kill your fucking mum, or, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> um, it, it's not a good film, I avoid it at all costs. Me and Stu were end up absolutely wrecked, he's into this thing, the new called Dark and Stormies. What's um, a Dark and Stormy? So it's Kraken Spice Drum. Oh, I love a crack in space. With ginger beer, like good quality ginger beer, not ginger ale. Yep. Ginger beer. Yep. And a wee splash of the old Hangastura bitters of the long vodka fame. Yep. Uh, plenty of ice. It's fucking lush. I, I, I like the sound of everything you've just said there. But we dabbled with it up here one night. I don't know where to get into this. I think he shot somewhere. The next minute he appears at my house with all the fixings for it. Oh, I think you need a, a nice wee wedge of lime in it, a wee crushed wedge of mm-hmm. lime as well. But the only spice drum I had, I think, was my the remnants of a bottle of Old J, which is the original Sailor Jerry stuff. Yep. And it's too overpowering. It's as yeah. far, there's too many flavours and sweetness going on in it. And I wasn't that taken with it, but when I had it down at his house with a bottle of the cracking spice mm-hmm. drum, which is like the dark one. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, it was absolutely blinding. But I had about four of them watching this film. I was fucked up. Wonder if you could, I wonder if you could substitute the, the ginger beer for the alcoholic ginger beer. Just oh, you'd be a braver man than me if you did. Cunt punt it, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like. Hey, fuck it. Yeah. Sling mm. a wee vodka in there for good measure. Oh, didn't know you're talking my language. <laughs> I once, I, I once worked with, I, I once worked with a guy who um, was from a very well-off family, and he was forever talking about these ski holidays that he went when he was in, like when he was in uni or whatever. You know, Val mum and dad. Yeah, like mum and dad paid for him to go to ski holidays, and he was telling me a story which I later said to him was like the most, like middle to upper class hangover story that I'd ever heard that he was talking about how he wasn't allowed to ride up to the top of the peak on the third day in the helicopter because he'd thrown up in it the night before because he'd been doing vodka red wines and I was like what's a vodka red wine and he was like that vodka and red wine and I was like like what you met he's not it's like red wine and you put vodka in it that's and not I was a like, thing no that was what he was drinking um yeah and he, he'd thrown up on the helicopter on the way up to the summit, so I, like, I'm like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go for it, Baz, I think we should try them. I think me, and you yeah, they're, uh, they're really good. By the way, they are really good, but they did not make this you. film. Good man. It was one of those you'd lost all interest about a minute of the movie. Do you know what I mean? You ah, I mean, yeah, I'll never watch it. I'll never yeah, watch it because it looks, it looked shit. So oh. it doesn't surprise me that it was shit. Um, let, right, well, I'll counter back and then uh, let me talk about something that I was right. I don't like. Promoting how right I always am, Baz. Uh-huh. You know this about me. I'm a humble guy. You're a humble man. I do. I, I, I like to. I like to feel that sometimes my actions speak louder than my words. That's why um, you hardly ever bring up your massive veiny cock on the podcast. 
<laughs> and we won't be doing it on this video either. Uh, so I uh, I checked out the Guillermo del Toro Cabinet of Curiosities. Oh yes, so you four did. day event on Netflix ran from the twenty fifth to the twenty eighth. Two episodes per night, yep. with uh, Guillermo del Toro handpicking horror directors that he wanted to work with, and I will say fucking success was it good overall there's not a bad episode in it oh hot damn not one eight bad episode episodes? eight episodes yeah. the lot the shortest episode is 35 minutes that's episode number two the longest episode is i think an hour and ten. Oh, i thought um, they were all just about an hour most uh, of them like turn uh, out yeah, about an hour yeah. i think the first one's 50 minutes second one's 35 and then after that they all go to about an hour but um, they're, they're really interesting voices so you've got Jennifer Kent who did the Babadook she's mm-hmm. got, she does the last one which is a kind of more traditional kind of ghost story sort of one it's the one that's maybe the least remarkable but has some of the best acting mm-hmm. Has that guy who played the in The Walking Dead the who, the guy who was the main guy who got written out to get his own movie it's Andrew Lincoln oh is that Andrew Lincoln, yeah, yeah 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 he's in it, he's fucking incredible Really, really, really good. And he co-stars alongside the woman who played the mother in The Babadook. Um, and it's a kind of haunted house story. Really, really, really well done. Um, Panos Cosmotos, he of uh, Mandy fame, uh, does an episode called The Viewing, which is the one that sticks out like a sore thumb because it's basically a Panos Cosmotos movie. It's all uh, shot like fucking bizarre. Eighty synth wave, like 80 synth wave playing in. Um, has Peter Weller, Robocop, um, right. is in it as a cult leader kind of thing. Well, I, I, I avant-garde aristocrat um, who invites a bunch of people in different fields to his house uh, to basically get coked out of their tits and then go through and see a meteor that's fallen from the sky. And I won't go any further than that, but it's, it's really fucking good. Um, you then had, um, I'm working in reverse order, yeah. uh, Dreams in the Witch House, which is based on a Lovecraft story, Dreams in the Witch House, which stars um, fucking Ron Weasley from the Harry Potter movies. Oh, yeah. Um, Rupert, Rupert Grint. Grint. It's directed by Catherine Hardwick, who is probably most known for, even though she's done much more interesting things, she's most known for that first Twilight movie. It was good. It wasn't amazing. I kind of liked the story. I loved the effects in it. The actual witch stuff was really cool. Um, the one before that was uh, Pickman's Model, which is also a Lovecraft. Uh, it was directed by a guy called Keith Thomas. Um, this one had Crispin Glover in it. All right. Who's fucking amazing in it. But it's it's a really gnarly kind of twisted period piece uh, gets more sinister by the end it's the right shade of sh- bad shit for me uh, the one before that was The Outside which is directed by Anna Lily Amanpour who did that A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night Ah, oh, now we're talking so it is kind of this 1950s Americana, like full colour scape, all the works, and it's about a housewife played by. Did you you watch The Big Bang Theory, didn't you? Yes. Remember, uh, Raj had a girlfriend who would get uncomfortable and then walk out the room or Kate hide herself in the toilet. Yes. Yeah, no, Kate McCucci. Right, she's in Kate McCucci's notes. She's the main actress in this. All right, yeah, yeah. She's fucking incredible. Yeah, so she's, she's really good. She's awkward. She's surrounded by uh, people. She works in a bank. She's surrounded by these women that are all into their face makeup and all mm. the rest. And she's really awkward. And she gets invited to a Christmas party and she's given this skincare product. So she tries to use it in, at home and her face breaks it and fucking hives and blotches and all the rest. Uh, but she becomes obsessed that is, this is going to make her feel better because there's an infomercial that runs and that Dan Stevens that's in The Guest remember the movie The Guest? did you ever watch that? don't think so well he's, he plays the guy in the TV basically talking her to, to using this and it gets really surreal and really weird it's kind of dark comedy it's really well done like really 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 well done um, the one before that though is mwah, the masterpiece of the entire series it is The Autopsy directed by David Pryor a guy who Duncan fucking called it 
two years ago when a little movie called The Empty Man came out and I was like one of maybe five podcasters saying, this is the movie that everyone's sleeping on this year. It's fucking great. The Get it watched. Man. The Empty Man. The only place you can watch it's on Disney. So that's it's on, on Disney, Disney Plus. as well, is it? Yes, it's on Disney Plus. Dis- so it I'm was- forgetting I'm on camera here and I have the itchiest yep. nose in the whole of Christendom <laughs> right now. So excuse me, folks. It's a... Uh, it, it, it was the last movie that Fox were going to put out. Okay. And uh, after the acquisition. Mm-hmm. Um, so Disney put it out for the two week cinemas were open in 2020. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it didn't perform particularly well. And everyone hated it. And I don't know why. It's fucking great. Right. Right. And this is him. Guillermo del Toro obviously loved that He picked him to do it. It's It's amazing. So it's kind of like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Once again, it's a period piece. It's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, but it's kind of set in an old coal mining town in America. And a guy, like, at the beginning appears to go in and set off a bomb in a mine. And the sheriff is not convinced things are the way that they are, but an insurance company doesn't want to pay out. So they bring in a a guy to do the autopsies, played by uh, F. Murray Abraham. Oh, uh huh. So he's the the autopsy guy that comes out to do it, and he starts conducting all these autopsies, but then starts to realise there's something sinister, maybe in the background. It is dark. It's fucking gnarly. It has like a couple of scenes that I was like, "This is just what. This is just everything about. Like, if this is the only good thing that came out this show, it's fucking amazing." Yeah. Um, it has a really kind of nihilistic John Carpenter style ending. It's excellent. It's fucking excellent. It's called The Autopsy. The beauty of these is you can watch them in any order. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Because they're all standalone the stories. Oh, yeah. Um, the one before that's the shortest one. Uh, that's Graveyard Rats. It's directed by Vincenzo Natale, who is most, no- most known for doing the Cube movies. Oh, right, and he also okay. did that Splice movie way back in the day. I don't know if you ever saw Splice. I don't remember Splice. I've seen the Cube. Yeah, he's done a ton of TV as well. Um, it's based on the novel... I think a short story from like the 1930s or something. Um, and it's a period piece as well, but a grave robber. Um, okay. It's it's excellent as well. Really short, fun, quirky, all the rest. And then the first one um, was uh, Lot 36. It was directed by Gil Nero Navarro, who is, who's been the cinematographer for a ton of Guillermo del Toro's movies. Right. This is obviously, he does, apparently does a lot of TV as well. And it's a kind of what would happen if Storage Wars existed in a world where the the lot that you open contained a demon summoning table and books owned by occult Nazis. <laughs> that actually sounds quite good. <laughs> it's really good. So it's a great start. It's, well, once again, it sets the pace. Um, overall, I, there's not a bad one in there. I think the lowest grade I gave was a three and three and a half. Right. And the highest I gave two fives out on it, cool. um, and I would highly recommend it. And if hopefully it did really well in Netflix. So, but the beauty of it is, like every episode starts with Gemma Del Toro coming out and doing a wee introduction, kind of a very Alfred a Hitchcock. Hitchcock. I was just going like, to say, I remember totally that. Totally like Hitchcock. Hitchcock and I love the, the like he sets up the story at the beginning, and then he puts down a little figurine. And, you know, this is today's story and it's directed by, and he gives you the director's name. It's like, it's like a real event thing. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I, I, it was the thing I was banging on about. Not that I want yeah, to say yeah, I was yeah. right. It's the thing I was banging about for months and it delivered for me and more. Uh, I nice. think it's easily in terms of things that have been curated for, by any of the streaming services for release in October, it was the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I quite fancy that. Uh, I'm a yep. Del Toro fan. Yeah, I'll definitely yep. be checking that out, I've got to say. Nice. Um, nice. As. I mean, in, ter- in terms of TV, it's another thing that's actually not on my list, but in terms of television shows during October, me and my wife did watch The Dammer. Uh, I'm halfway show. through it. Yeah, yeah. I really liked it, I've got to say. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm enjoying it, yeah. I don't I consider myself an expert on Dammer, but I'm much more familiar with the story of it than my wife is. Yeah. Um, but no, we both enjoyed it. Um, I I <laughs> I think a lot of the time my wife forgot we were watching something that was 
you know, a true story kind of thing. Yeah. Some of it is quite fantastical, some of the stuff yes. that, he, that he was pulling, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, see, of, it's been, it's been, um, it's been greenlit for two, uh, two new seasons as well. Two new anthology seasons. Dabber. Yeah, the, yeah. So the concept, the concept of you know he's got a, like American horror story and he's got American crime story uh-huh. and he's got American rivals and right. All these sorry, things. I thought you meant another season about Dahmer, right? You no, no, no. Another similar, right? Okay. So that he's been doing. Okay so Netflix is uh, it's, apparently he's calling it Monsters. Uh, I'm like right, so uh, they've greenlit two new seasons of Monsters. Which I don't know if that means they'll be doing another serial killer or some fucking war criminal or I don't know, but I, I hope they do. I bet you one of them's Ramirez. I would love that man. Yeah. I think I think he's got it in him to like from what I've seen of the Dammer stuff. So they have changed the story in some bits. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I know, yeah. but like like you see, I'm sitting with my wife and like I've been pointing. I'm like, well, that didn't, I didn't, that didn't happen. Um, but then there's other bits where she's looking at me and she's got that. I never happened and I'm like, no, that that yeah, that definitely yeah. happened. That's exactly how that happened. My wife didn't the, the bit with the drill. Yeah. Up until the very end when they actually I think talk about it. I think she just thought she killed him with the drill. Oh no, no, no not him. No, no, no. Fuck Far zombie. worse than that. <laughs> yeah, fuck zombie. Far worse than that. Like cause Corinne said to me, she was like, Can you do that? And I was like, I don't think it actually works, but he really? tried. Uh, <laughs> That's the levels this cunt was working on. My <laughs> next one on the list is one that you and I saw together, which was Smile. Ah, yes. That. Yeah, a film I, I really liked. I really enjoyed Smile. It's done amazing business now. I think yeah. we're well over 100 million. Well yeah. over 100 million. So. Uh, I mean, it borrows its shit from other places, but I, I really enjoyed it. I got a few good scares in it as well. Yeah. Um, and we've talked about it before, the, the marketing for this film was fucking genius. Very smart. Yeah. Very, very, very smart. So yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed Smell. Yeah. I really enjoyed I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit less... I, I mean, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah. I had some issues for me, but... Yeah, like, I've said before, like, to me, I've kind of over the moon that it did as well as it did. Yeah. Like, I know plenty of people that went to see it and it scared the shit out of them. Yeah, oh, I mean, for the, for the Halloween movie... Mm-hmm. It's a pretty decent one to go and see yep. in the cinema um, because because it is you know like I said I got a few good scares during that film um, yeah. so yeah I would definitely recommend that the next one after that uh, I think it's on Netflix uh, Choose or Die yeah I've avoided this yeah. one you're the third person now to tell me don't don't do it <laughs> yeah it was, it was a bit kind of hit and miss I quite like the kind of vibe of the film. And I think, again, you and I have talked about this. I don't know if we did it on air or if it was just us talking, but my, my biggest problem was it was clearly filmed in England. <laughs> and the lead <laughs> guy is in Sex Education on Netflix. I know for a fact he's English. Yeah. I don't know about the female lead in it, but they all play it. It's, play, it's set in America. It's, they play it with American accents. I'm like, what the fuck for? Because there's no bearing at all in the story. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was... Yeah, no, it was, it was a bit kind of hit and miss. Uh, it's, the, the premise behind it is a kind of killer video game. And yep. I, I just think things like that have been kind of touched on before. And it's well trodden. Done better. And the, the, the thing that it reminded me of was that, did you, did you ever watch Utopia? That played no, on I never did. 4? Maybe you, you talked about it as well. Did they not yeah, cancel it? They did. They cancelled it after season two. I didn't enjoy the second season of it quite as much. I thought the first season was really good. And then the the gangster, the remake of it, mm. which I've not seen. So I, I couldn't tell you anything about it. But it, Utopia was very off the wall. Yeah. Um, it almost had a kind of League of Gentlemen type oddness about it. <laughs> Don't try and drop keywords in to make me watch this motherfucker, Baz. But this, you like a this film, for some reason, this reminded me of that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't really know why, but anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't tell about anybody to rush out and see it straight away. Certainly not the worst thing I saw over the fucking October. Either, <laughs> the worst thing I saw was Phantasm 4. Um, 
<laughs> and just falling straight on for that because I'm not going to talk about it. it's Phantasm 5 that was the next <laughs> one on my list uh, which we did an entire show on and it's marginally better than 4 but it's still dumb shit <laughs> well let me let me swing through you and then I, I, I'll bring it in um, Dark Glasses brand new movie Big Daddy or Gentle coming back after a 10 oh, year yeah. hiatus don't hate us um, coming back with a giallo picking yeah. up where he left off a real like one it? it's an well yeah it's a, it's a giallo yeah um, not a perfect movie has issues I think it's a great Rosetta Stone for a ton of other things he's done he's playing with themes he played with before surprisingly heartwarming in parts and then other bits where you're just like, this is just fucking bonkers. Maybe one of my favourite kind of opening kill sequences in an Argento movie ever. Um, and he kind of loses his... He kind of, like, doesn't want to spend a lot of time on the killer. And he kind of wants to kind of deal with this relationship between this woman who loses her sight at the hands of a killer. Um, oh, right, okay. Hence but the dark she, glasses, I would wager. Yeah, dark glasses. Uh, and but she knows the smell of the killer. Do you know what I mean? So she can like, uh, like she's got this scent. Like she could recognize him from her scent. Like all great giallos, it's all about someone being able to recall something that would help uh-huh. them solve a crime. Yeah, so yeah. that that's the thing. But the she is befriended by a, a like a small Asian boy who basically is her eyes and ears. Um, and they are being stalked by this killer, essentially. I thought it, it, it worked really well for me in a lot of respects. I gave it about a three and a half, though. It's not a great, it's not a great or gentle movie, but it's definitely better than maybe the last two or three that he's made. Okay. Um, and certainly, it proved to me there are certain sequences in that when I'm like that. This guy could, he can still go. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He can still direct. Still fuck got out ideas stuff. there. Yep. Yeah still it's like still still there's still something there and it of course the news has dropped that he's currently working on his next movie so this is like he's went from a 10 year hiatus of doing stuff to now making two movies back to back he's remaking a a mexican crime thrower i believe but he's, i think is. it might be i think it's set in paris potentially i don't know um so I think it's our general <laughs> do whatever he wants do whatever he wants just keep giving the guy money and i'll be happy um so that's that's worth a mention it's on shudder for anyone that wants to watch it um but let me hit you with a a double bill here the first one not available on shudder you might not want to watch it but i would highly recommend that i thought it was fucking great it was one of my favorite things i watched in october and it's the innocence it's the okay. norwegian movie um and it's kind of superhero kind of reminded me a little bit of it's kind of got the aesthetic of something like a let the right one in okay but it plays with ideas of kind of remember the movie chronicle that i didn't like the found footage movie where the kids that find the meteor that gives them superpowers. Oh, I've never seen that. I know the one you're talking about. Well, it's kind of it's, it's something. It's basically set in a housing estate during a summer period where these four relatively neglected kids, as in their parents, don't have fucking any interest in them. Yeah. All start to befriend each other, and one of them reveals that he like has this almost kind of like telekinesis ability. But the more they spend time together, the more they realise that they can actually, they all kind of have this power that they can tap into. And then it spirals kind of out and then inevitably one of them goes bad. Mm. And then the sinister element comes out. Excellent child acting. Really, really cool concept. Gets pretty dark towards the end. It's a, it's a long movie. It's two hours. But the last 40 minutes really start going down a sinister kind of road. Um, it's well put together. I, I thought it was excellent. I thought it was an absolutely brilliant movie. Um, so ve- very much worth your time. I don't know if it's a horror. I was, I was struggling with this about how I would classify it, yeah. which kind of annoyed me. And then the last one I want to talk about, which you will fucking love and you need to watch it, and it's on Shudder, and it's Hellbender. Uh, Hellbender is directed by the Adams family, not the... Yeah. But the actual Adams family who directed the movie. Is this the one about the girl whose mum's a witch? Yes. I've seen it. 
Oh, what did you think? I loved it. I thought it was great. Oh, it's fucking yeah, yeah. absolutely amazing. Like, yeah, yeah. right, so these guys here, the, the people that made it, right, so the mother who's the witch, the daughter who is... Just to clarify, right, so it's the girl, she lives, they live away in a, a yes. house away up the top of a mountain. Yes. Is that right? And the girl comes down, she meets people that are kind of crashing somebody's pool house thing. Yes, yeah. that's the one. And yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they, 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 they jam, her and her mum jam in a, a basement. In that's a band right, they've prisoner. got a band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so, so, like, I don't know why it took me so long to get to this, because, right, so the mother and the daughter and the uncle who they meet in the woods. Uh-huh. Right. Those three are the people that made the movie. Right, right, okay. Right, so they are the quote-unquote Adams family, right? right? Um, They made a movie called The Deeper You Dig, which Arrow put out last year. Okay. And I interviewed them last year, and they were a fucking delight to speak to. They were right. on they were on the road touring with their movie, and they, they phoned in, they like, did an interview with them over Zoom, and they were in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, and they just they took time out, they were chatting, they were so fucking nice, like so, so nice. And they said to me at the time that, oh yeah, we've got, we're working on a new project. And it's a witch movie. And then that, I didn't ask them for the name. I didn't know anything about it. And so I sat down to watch Hellbender and it come up, the Adams family at the beginning. I was like that. This is the fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was fucking great. I yeah. thought it was absolutely brilliant. I'd love the, like, as witch movies go, I thought it had a really fresh, original concept. I had a great style. I thought the acting was great for an indie movie where it's just people that they can grab to be yeah, in different yeah. roles. I thought the acting was really good. Um, I loved the ending. It gets batshit towards yeah, the end yeah. and I really, really, really enjoyed that. And when it finished, I was just like that. These guys are, like, The Deep You Dig is a good movie. Mm-hmm. Hellbender is like 10, 10 times better than that yeah, movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they are, they are clearly, it's now, they are, you know, bouncing up with great ideas and all the rest. I thought it was excellent. It'll be on my end of year list. I think it's that good. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I can't remember. It was a while ago I watched it. it must it's been have out been for ages. Yeah, I've just been slow at the mark. Kind of thing. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really liked it. I really liked it. There we go. Um, that's that's all I'm going to say on this one. So I'll give the last the last shouts to you. Right. Okay. Uh, quite a few of them we've spoken about before. Uh, one I watched just because it was only an hour long. The McPherson tape. Which yes. Is <laughs> thing, um, which I think we've talked about before. Yeah. I thought the film was okay, and then when you explained the background to the making of that film and the history yep. of the film itself, as opposed to what's in it, actually made it far more interesting. I wish I'd known that before I watched it. Almost kind of thing. Yeah. So that yeah. was good. Um, Studio Six Six Six, the Foo Fighters movie. Yep. You were, you t- got halfway through that the last. Time uh, yeah, I yeah. So, so I, but I think I actually it took me that long. I just went back and watched it all again, just from the beginning. But. It was. I really liked it. Again, it's a good thirty-one of October movie. Yeah. Um, there's some gnarly effects in it. It's it's funny seeing Grohl lose his shit in the film. You know, it, it, I think yeah. he's really good as well. He's really funny in it. Um, he's a very good actor. They all are, with the exception of Pat Smear. Poor Pat Smear. God love him. He was in the Germs. He, yeah. He is a terrible <laughs> fucking actor. But he almost kind of plays on that, and it actually comes over okay. Um, but you know, it's definitely worth watching Studio 666. It's fun. It's yeah. not the best horror movie you've ever seen in your life, but you'll have a good time watching it. Um, Loose Flower of Evil, we talked about elsewhere. Yep. Halloween Ends, we've just talked about. Yep. Deadstream. De- I love Deadstream. Yeah, it was really yep. good. Um, the best way I can describe that, I think it's like the funny half of Grave Encounters, but it's yep. just all like that. Um, yes, <laughs> and I really liked it. The guy and it's, he plays the part really, really well. Um, the, my favourite one out the whole stuff that I actually did in October, uh, I believe it's on Netflix. Coming home in the dark. Ah, oh, it's excellent. Uh, yeah. New Zealand movie, uh, a kind of abduction type horror thing. Bleak as fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, but just absolutely amazing. If you like stuff like The Hounds of Love and those kind of uh, Antipodean films, um, yeah, it, it was absolutely amazing. You and I have spoken about it. I, I yeah. absolutely loved it. It just hit all the right notes for me. Felt like utter shit by the end of it. Um, yeah. 
and it was hanging about about two days later in my head as well. <laughs> um, I genuinely, I cannot recommend that enough, although you have to dig that type of film. Um, if you don't like yeah. films that make you feel bad, don't watch this. Yeah. Because it'll bum you the F out, do you know what I mean? But I, I mm. thought it was immense. Immense. A um, couple other old-timey ones that I had on mm. Blu-ray that I hadn't watched. The Amityville Horror. Um, Classics. Yeah, really enjoyed it. I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know how much I'm that interested in seeing any more of the Amityville stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I know there's there. listeners out there that have been pushing for a while. I'm talking about you, Chris. Chris Ward out there, um, who podcasts with, with our buddy Myron over at the Ancient Slumber. Chris has been basically saying to me on and off for the best part of about four years that if I ever decide to Russian roulette that Amityville franchise, he wants an invite. And I keep telling him, I, I like, I'm doing Bad Ben next. I know I'm, I know that's the known quantity, right? <laughs> I don't know if I have it in me to do all the Amityville movies, of which there are... So have you never done f- the Amityville stuff? So I've done show? the first movie, but I've oh, never right. done the franchise. And at this, right. I think where we are now in the franchise, we're at double figures. Couldn't tell you. I think we are. I think I think there's one that comes out every other year and yeah. has been for like the best part of like 20 years now. I think I, we're I, I easily remember, over 10. I, I think I was putting this on my wish list like, kind of coming up. I think it was Father's Day. My kid bought it yeah. for me or something. Um, and I remember being very careful that I got like, the, the right original one. one. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I really enjoyed that. And then American Werewolf in London, which was one that you had given me your Arnold yep. copy of. Um, Can't go wrong with that, buddy. You know, I, I had definitely seen a bit of American Werewolf in London, but I had never seen it all because I had no recollection of the. the what? Ending. You that was a first full time watch. First all the way through, yeah, yeah, yeah. How the fuck am I all the time about this now? I don't know. I don't know. But I, I did. <laughs> I was familiar with it, and I, I, of course, I had seen the infamous <laughs> transformation scene before. Yeah. But, oh, um, yeah, so good. Yeah, really, really enjoyed it. I didn't realise there was as much humour in that movie as No, it's a comedy. Yeah, it's yeah, a comedy. Yeah, I, I didn't know It's that. John Landis. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's John, it's a John Landis movie, yeah, so it's yeah. by default full of John Landis humour. Humour kind of thing, yeah. Uh, and then the last one, which again was out with actual October, was Prey, the new um, Predator movie. Which I enjoyed a lot, considering I've yeah. never seen Predator the whole way through. <laughs> yeah, um, like, you know, like trigger warning, like shitloads uh, of people uh, out there that now looking at their device with rage. But, uh, uh, no, I, I really liked it. I loved the whole kind of Native American slant that they put on it. I thought that yeah. was really good. Um, yeah, that was great. So, so that's awesome. what I have been watching. I think we do this again next year. Yeah, I think we as well. Should. I've enjoyed this, just like touch points and just kind of like highlighting the good stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I've come away, there's a couple out of what you've mentioned there that I'm going to track down and watch, definitely. Yeah, um, I, I will uh, I'll just kill the ones that you can't get. Um, so like yeah, we're, we're also... Yeah, we're also... Um, so we, we, in the background, we've been planning the next Bazzi's Backdoor Cinema. And the next one after that. So I think we have like two ideas floating around in the background yeah. just now. Uh, one of them is back in the true crime world, which yes, we've uh, done before, which I'm very, very excited about doing because it's, once again, close to home. Yep. Uh, something that you've got a bit more knowledge than I do, actually, yes. um, on it. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. We'll see no more about that until we, we start locking that in. Uh, and the second one is a movie which I found um, being advertised on the internet, and I thought, like if ever there was a movie that me and Baz have to do, we have to do this one, uh, and it's my neighbor Adolf, yeah. um, and it's got it's got Udo Kier as a German guy that lives next to a, an actor that I know. I've seen loads of things. Scottish actor, is he not? I think. Who can't is remember. It? I can't remember now. That's going to annoy the fuck at me. Um, if only I could, while we're chatting here, come off that not break so my face. To... Uh, yeah. It just, My... it just sounds to me, you type frantically and I will, yep. it just, all that I keep thinking of, it just sounds like apt pupil on crystal meth. And yeah, I... so it's, <laughs> uh, so the actors are uh, David Heyman. Oh, yeah, 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 David Heyman. Yeah, yeah. and Udo Kier, and the synopsis, 
which by the way, if this doesn't sell you on it, I don't know what will. South America, 1960. A lonely and grumpy Holocaust survivor convinces himself that his new neighbour is none other than Adolf Hitler. Lonely Not being taken seriously. <laughs> Holocaust survivor, as opposed yeah. to all the fucking cheery, happy go lucky Holocaust survivors that were kicking about in the early 60s. Fuck me. Right, this is written by Leon Pruduski, so I don't know which position he takes on this. But not being taken seriously, he starts an independent investigation to prove his claim. But when the evidence still appears to be inconclusive, Polsky is forced to engage in a relationship with the enemy in order to obtain irrefutable proof. Right, Udo Kier plays his neighbour and might be Hitler. And yeah. that to me is all the more reason that we need to fucking watch this. I said it to you and you were like that. Yes. yes. Like just stay away. I didn't know about the history like indulge in a relationship and see if he sucks Hitler off. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my shit by the way. Honestly God. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh god. Is that, is that is that Fright Night reviews I get all over again? If he if he goes down on one knee and sucks, sucks Hitler off. Um <laughs> So that's, that's, also Heyman, the, that's also on the. Obviously, Heyman so. is most famous for uh, Sonny Flesher Man. Probably. Yeah, he was in Sonny Flesher Man, a movie that we bonded over many, many years ago. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, he also. Um, I believe he used to holiday in Dunoon, I think, as a young man. He's Scottish, isn't he? he is yeah, Scottish. yeah, he is Scottish, yeah. Yeah, David Yeah, so. Like, so as, it's like all the more reason for us to watch it. Yeah, can't wait. So yeah, we, we are going to be doing a review of that somewhere down the road. I don't know when it's dropping, but we have the movie now, so um, it will be happening sometime soon. And like I say, the next Bazzi's Backdoor Cinema will be us sitting down doing uh, a little uh, a little deep dive into some more Scottish true crime. Um, and of course, I mean, there's other things that will happen before the end of the year. Of course, Baz will return for uh, his annual Christmas Eve commentary with myself. We'll extend the invite out to our buddies Scott and Stop doing the face. worst time of the year. We might be even able to do it as a video. I, had, I haven't quite worked it out yet, but it might happen. Uh, that, and we'll get that, buddies... That's just me getting drunk looking at my phone. You're just like, I can't wait the fuck. Playing Sudoku. Okay, okay. We'll <laughs> extend the invite out to our buddies Scott and Liam from Scott and Liam vs. Evil. I think we've got the movie picked, but I need to just confirm that. So there's that as well. Same and we, yeah, did I know this? Uh, I think me, Liam, and Scott agreed what oh, it should right, be. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, whether or not like it's going to actually right. happen. Um, and yeah, and oh, I dare say if we go and see something at the cinema bars, mm. uh, we may do a short form review here. But thank you very much for joining uh, us. Are we on going this... to tell people what we're doing later on in the month for our Jaws of Shite Day out? Because it does have a horror slant to it. Are you definitely going to do it? You're not going to wuss out on me here. No, I'll definitely do it. I, I mean, I'm yes. going to scream like a bitch you can, for you most can, of it. But. Yeah, you can te- uh, yeah, yeah. Let, let the listeners know, because we are on the 26th of November. We are going out in the big smoke. Myself, the Baz, the the luscious Scott and the luscious Liam. As, uh, as Baz noted, the first time that all four of us will be out as married men. Yeah. So it's four Good. married men on the town. Put those vaginas away, ladies. <laughs> This train bag. has left the station. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we're go- <laughs> we are uh, we're going to an escape room, but I believe it is a haunted hospital escape room. So it is a fucking Scots dug up to somewhere. It's a terrible idea. I don't that that's actually what think it's a real thing. I think it's just Scots work. Yeah, I, it's I, yeah, a, it possibly, it's a tour, I possibly a tour. had to shut down a wing at Scott's work due to demonic possession, and Scott has thought it's going to be funny to take me along and like lock me in for an hour or something. I'm, like I am genuinely surprised that you've said yes, because I know now how much you're going to hate it. So they don't know yet, bad. Uh, so yeah, we'll be doing that, and there'll be some sort of live videos. Oh, by kind of, I, yeah, but it's, it's going to happen, and I, I, I kind of post post review for sure. Um, but until then, Baz, 
Would you like to say goodbye to our listeners, Absolutely. please? Absolutely. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this rambling shit, folks. Um, in video! Here's the fingers crossed that the video quality has been <laughs> so bad that this only gets released on audio. It'll be see there. See all you sexy bitches <laughs> on the flip side. They've just gone right back to those nipples. Yeah, just right back to Start them. Start with uh, the tits, finish <laughs> with the tits. It's the buzz way. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, ladies and gents, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, yeah, if this has worked, then we will do more. Um, I'd, I'd love to say we'll get more professional, but that requires me to find time to become more professional, which is never going to happen. Um, so yeah, uh, rather than bore you with the blurb here, um, please check out tputtscast.com. Everything is there. Search for podcasts under the stairs or hit subscribe wherever you're listening to us right now. And please check out the stuff on the Teaputs Collective. I've got four shows over there that I curate um, of varying degrees of interest to people out there. And you might be one of those that like one of them. So until then, wherever you are, what the time zone is, and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. This is Duncan McLeese broadcasting live from under the stairs in video, motherfuckers, with a buzz. Uh, and live for the first time. I can actually say that. You can see there's no edit cuts. And I and the buzz are signing off. Bye, everyone. <laughs>